Hello, I'm Lori Dennis from the Blue Water Audubon Society and I am here today to share with you about some exciting bird programs that are going to be starting in this area. We have the St. Clair Macomb Birding Trail which is going to be initiated very soon and a very exciting program that we present every year is called the Winter Bird Blast. My husband and I started the Winter Bird Blast in 2015 when we saw a need for the citizens of this area who come down and look at birds at the St. Clair River, but they don't realize the significance of the birds that they're seeing and how important they are to the environment. And so after that, we decided we would start a simple program to introduce the local people to the birds that are in their local area. So with me today are birders. I have my husband, Tom Dennis, who is with Blue Water Audubon and is the author of Times Herald Bird Articles. And then we have Julie Champion, who is with the <laughs> Macomb Audubon. Barb Baldinger from Macomb Audubon, and from Detroit Audubon, Liz Clark. Thank you all for coming today. Because I did call you birders, Tom, would you explain what a birder is? Birders are ordinary people. And uh, as you can see from us, we're all fairly ordinary, unique, <laughs> special in our own ways, of course. But birders are young and old. Uh, they are found throughout the world, and uh, you you, you may uh, ask, how do we recognize someone as being a birder? Uh, a dead giveaway would be they'd be carrying one of these instruments. They'd have their binoculars strung around their neck. Uh, they may or may not be carrying a bird guide. Uh, if they don't have a written book like this, you can be assured that they'll have a bird guide as an app on their cell phone. Okay. But uh, we're people of all ages, all colors, uh, male, female what have you, and just, I would say, basically, we are people that enjoy the natural environment, and with that, we have a special appreciation of these wonderful creatures we all know as birds. Yes. Barb, can you share with us why birding is so popular? Well, it's a popular hobby because people can be involved at any level. There are many people that just watch the birds in their backyard. They make them happy. They may not even know what the birds, what they're called. They just know they like the red one or the blue one, and that's fine. They're happy at their level. Then there's people who are active with groups and field trips through the Audubon societies or other nature groups, and they gather for the camaraderie because they like going birding with other people. And then there's people who um, travel around the world like me, to see birds in other locations. We study ahead of time so we know what we're looking for. We'll hire bird guides to take us to the, you know, the best spots. And then there's a lot of record keeping for those who are interested. That um, there's a life bird is a bird you see for the first time in your life. So you keep records of that. And in years past, we did it on computer programs like Avasys, but now eBird has become the most popular and it, uh, it's through Cornell University. Um, ornithology lab and um, makes it very easy in the field to use the app on your phone and enter which what birds you're seeing and location. So it's all levels of birding makes it a, a very popular hobby. I'd like to add uh, as well as what Barb said, uh, one nice thing about birding is it really doesn't require any special equipment. Uh, people do spend a lot of money on optics but there are people who are just as happy to, as Barb said, watch from their window. And those are people that are real birders and they're enjoying the birds just as much as those with long distance optics. So you can get into birding for nothing. <laughs> if you mm -hmm. have eyesight, if you have good hearing, they help, but even both of those aren't required. So it's a very easy hobby and everyone can enjoy birding as it's become uh, either one or two in hobbies uh, these days. So I think it's right, behind, right ahead of or right behind gardening as the most popular hobby in the United States. I think we've also seen um, a big surge of interest in the last year or two with COVID and people are getting outdoors. It's an activity they can do with family and share with the family. The children can be out there with them. That's what 
uh, working in the metro parks that we've noticed um, a big increase and a lot of them were kind of starting with watching the birds and, and uh, kind of uh, watching the feeders at the nature center. So um, uh, it's also something of family activity that is, in, uh, I think, increased the uh, interest as the hobby. You talked about uh, the winter bird blast. Can mm -hmm. you share a little bit about that? Well, winter bird blast, uh, as Lori mentioned, uh, started out with kind of humble beginnings. We decided this is something we should do. And uh, over the years, this, this, by the way, will be our seventh annual winter bird blast. We took a year off last year because of the COVID pandemic. But uh, we have uh, incorporated help from other organizations over the years. Uh, Friends of the St. Clair River have been involved. Of course, Blue Water Audubon has always been involved. And we also have uh, uh, media involvement. Uh, they've been very generous uh, with news reports that have been uh, listed in the Times Herald and USA Today and other newspapers. Uh, local radio has been involved and uh, the word is, is spreading. Uh, but Winter Bird Blast is unique in that there aren't a lot of winter birding activities, uh, especially in the north. And when there are birding activities, they are often indoor events where people come to, to see the tropical birds on display or, or in wonderful pictures and videos um, it, because uh, anybody can see them uh, at a presentation, but to go to all those habitats can be very expensive. So Winter Bird Blast uh, gives people the opportunity to see some pretty unique birds that are special to this area of the world. And uh, it allows people to learn about them and then have the hands-on experience of going out into the field. Uh, to see these birds. That's that's why we do Winter Bird Blast, so that people can appreciate uh, the, the natural features of this area. Tom, will people have a chance to learn what birds they're going to see? They will. We will, we will start off um, with a presentation indoors uh, that is a, a PowerPoint presentation. We'll go through birds, uh, what types of birds are in the area, uh, we're focused largely on waterfowl that uh, are unique to us, mostly in the winter, but not exclusively. And uh, there will be a learning, uh, so this is a learning experience that's really appropriate for people who have no knowledge of birds to speak of, for novice birders intermediate and experts alike. Uh, there's always an opportunity for question and answer, so uh, it's, it's really a friendly and uh, a friendly and unique learning environment. Liz, why do people come to the Port Huron area to see birds? Well, the Port Huron area offers so much. There's a variety of habitats. That's what I've discovered. And um, Port Huron is only one hour away from Detroit. It's an easy access and it's a lovely drive. And so, um, my coming to Port Huron over the years, um, I, I have learned all these different habitats. You've got Lake St. Clair, you have, that leads right on up to Lake Huron. And on that area, you get a chance to see the different species of birds. And then, they have the county parks. There's six or seven county parks that offer the forests, um, they offer open range, so the habitat determines uh, what type of birds you're going to see. So for me, I love coming to Port Huron area. There's a lot to see, there's a variety of habitat, and you meet wonderful people. Birders, I say, are friendly people, and they like to share. So that's why I like coming here. That's right. <laughs> and Liz, can you tell us how, how did you hear about the Winter Bird Blast? Well, let's just say I always look at the websites, I read the papers, I look at magazines, and the weekend paper, Detroit Free Press, January 7th, one month ahead of the February 20th, 20, February 8th. It was one month ahead of the February 8th, 2020 Winter Bird Blast. And I saw these wonderful harlequin ducks 
that were going to be featured. And you're not going to see harlequin ducks every time. They, they winter here and the, before they go back home to, um, you know, uh, before they leave. So I said, I've got to come. So I got more information. I saw it in the free press and I made arrangements to come and to allow enough time to get here and I enjoyed it. And, I'm, and, and that's the thing, I came to the Winter Bird Blast, um, met a lot of different people, I learned a lot of different things. And so then I was prepared to do some things on my own. I did additional discovery or exploration of, of the Port Huron area. So, Liz, would you recommend that anybody could come to this? Of course. Um, when you say anyone, we're talking about, uh, as Tom has already said, you've got people with different backgrounds. You've got people, you know, they, um, they have different work experiences, but they love being outdoors. They love learning. They love birds. They love the water. Okay, so of any age, any background, whether you're professional or whether you don't, you're not working at all, this is a wonderful place to come. It's inviting. And it's good to uh, introduce, like, you know, families or, you know, you try, I'm trying to pull in some friends, you know. <laughs> come on in bird, you know. I, I got my little nephews involved, you know. But um, I love it and I don't let that stop me because you're going to meet other birders of different backgrounds, different age groups, different experiences, and they love to share. Now, you, I have my binoculars, but I don't have a spotting scope. So when you're out in the field, people are willing to share those spotting scopes. So, and when they spot a bird, they're going to make sure everyone on that team or on the hike can see it. Mm -hmm. And so you can come and, and view it through their spotting scope and then you have your binoculars. So people are sharing. It's just a great experience. It's also a free event. Yes. So it hasn't, it hasn't always been. We've had oh, suggested okay. donations, or, but we're not doing any of that this year. In fact, we're going to have some free raffle prizes. Uh, I would like to just go back a little bit more, though, on why people come to this area for birding. Uh, Liz just mentioned harlequin ducks. They don't come here every year, but they've been coming fairly regularly the last few winters. These, this is a species that we specialized or, or we highlighted because people come all over the, from all over the world to see them here. The other options to see them are the far Arctic north where they breed and then their wintering grounds which are on the far northeastern coast and the far northwestern coast of the United States. It's really an anomaly that they're here and the reason they're here is the unique natural features. They feed in rocky waters, fast moving, that have abundant food like macroinvertebrates like crayfish and insect larvae and small fish. So you don't find that all over the world. The birds will find them because they're, they're, in, they're here in this part of the world. And that's one of many species that uh, we hope to see. This year we're featuring another special species, the canvasback duck. So uh, many people know about canvasback ducks, but what do you know about it? Come to Winter Bird Blast and find out more. Far, why are birds here in the winter? Isn't it too cold for birds? Well, there's different birds in the winter. Some of them are the same, but some of them are different. And um, it isn't too cold. The main thing is to keep yourself warm. <laughs> you need to layer up <laughs> and that means you know if you in your car you might get a little bit warm so take off an outer jacket or something but when you get out layer it back on again you know you have to have your your hats your mittens your long johns whatever make sure that you are warm to enjoy the birds but um, say uh, if you're going to have like a target bird if you're going out in a specific spot like to see the harlequin ducks you know you're gonna be along the water and it's gonna be colder there but then uh, a lot of times you know we do car birding we just drive around the rural farm roads and we look for mm -hmm. rough-legged hawks, pine grosbeak, um, white-winged crossbills, um, snowy owls, just you know whatever might be out and about, the northern shrikes. These are birds you're not going to see in the summertime. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you know it's car birding and that's a little more comfortable when it's, it's cold weather out, but it doesn't stop us. You know, I'm one of those e-birders with a list a day. And so <laughs> we're out every day somewhere or another trying to you know, see what birds are around. And then you do have your, your common birds too, 
But to say the Blue Jays that we see now, they may not be the same ones. Ours may have gone down to Ohio or Kentucky, and we're seeing some that came down from the UP or Canada. But there's still Blue Jays around, so the, you know there's there's always something to see. Right. And Liz, what about the birds that are here in the summertime? We're not going to see those now. Is that correct? Well, I, I think not. They migrate as well. Okay. Um, so that's why it's good to bird, try to bird every season and know what birds are going to be um, available to see during that season, okay? So. Yeah, yeah. So, like I think both of you have said or alluded to, uh, some of these birds are here year round, uh, species wise. They may not be the same individuals, mm -hmm. but there are many unique species here winter only. Yes. Probably more than there are summer only. And then we have the seasons where birds are passing through. Migration. So you want to you want to be here mm -hmm. spring for winter <laughs> for spring and, and fall migration absolutely. Summer, summer. And by the way, we are we are on the intersection of a couple of major migration flyways. So St. Clair County, the end of Lake St. Clair and Lower Lake Huron. Uh, Mississippi Flyway and the Atlantic, Atlantic Flyway mm -hmm. cross right over us. So you'll see birds flying through in huge numbers if you're out at the right time of day, the right time of year. Right. Julie, why are birds so important to the environment? Um, well, uh, that's a that's a big question because <laughs> there is a lot of things related to it. But one thing back a little bit to uh, why we can see birds in the winter, to me it's amazing how they are so adapted to their environment or what their needs are, what they have to do all through the year. Um, so example, your harlequin ducks or the canvas backs, they're out there standing on the ice with bare feet. You know, <laughs> it's like, how do they do that? But they have special adaptations with the circulation and their feet. They are all layered up anyway with their waterproof feathers and their down on. So uh, same with the birds in the summer. They, um, they have to, um, adjust to uh, uh, temperature and finding their food. So all those adaptations um, relate to where they live in their environment and then in terms of what they, why they might be important to that environment, they're integral in terms of um, uh, disperse, they eat some, eat seeds and berries and they help disperse that and they, uh, like you mentioned blue jays, they help disperse acorns. We always think of squirrels only doing that, but blue jays catch the acorns all over and um, will uh, uh, help in dispersal and help forests grow. Uh, so that they, they, they're an important part of that. Um, a lot of them eat insects, so we always uh, consider that a service where they're eating a lot of our uh, tiny gnats, mosquitoes, all that sort of thing that help kind of keep things in control. I, I don't always say balance, but um, uh, keep things from getting uh, uh, too, uh, too many in an environment. So they're, they're, they have important roles for how they eat or where they live. Um, an exa I always use a woodpecker for an example, is he, they create the hole in the tree for um, themselves to live, but then they provide a habitat or a home for a bat later on or a flying squirrel, so other animals depend on them for some of the structures that they've uh, created because they had the tools to do that, the woodpecker does. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so a lot of animals depend on them, people depend on them for, for just, like I say, dispersal of food and seed. Um, and, uh, and then certainly, we use them, they have always been used, the old canary in the coal mine, in terms of uh, kind of an indication of um, the health of the environment. If there's something particularly um, going on in environment, uh, it, it might first, like DDT would be a good example in terms of what we notice is the whole uh, uh, it was in the water, it was in the fish, it was in the food, and it created problems for loons and eagles and the peregrine falcons um, because uh, they couldn't reproduce, their eggs were too thin. So that was our alarm call that we need to address those things, which fortunately we have worked very hard at reintroducing those animals, cleaning up the environment. So they, they help us uh, in terms of being a, um, 
a guide to what's going on out there in the environment. So that's just one, I mean, we could go on. <laughs> but uh, lots, lots of different ways that they're, they're helpful in the environment. Thank you for that, Julie. You're, you've provided lots of things to think about when we think about our little feathered friends that really how important they are. Tom, this year the Winter Bird Blast is going to be extra special. Can you explain a little bit about that? This is an exciting year for us because along with the normal Winter Bird Blast curriculum, if you will, we'll, we'll also be introducing mm -hmm. the St. Clair County portion of the St. Clair Macomb mm -hmm. Birding Trail. So uh, this has been uh, uh, several years in the making. It's coming to fruition quickly. Uh, uh, Macomb County had a launch in October mm -hmm. and uh, part of the grant says we need to do launch activities and uh, we thought hey winter bird blast the perfect time we have a big audience this time of year so we're going to launch this uh, bi-county birding trail. There are oh f I think five other recognized birding trails in the state of Michigan and there are birding trails all over the United States but this will be a great feature uh, for our area and I think some of the other ladies are going to talk more about that. Julie, what makes a trail, a birding trail and not just the path in the woods? Right, right. So when you hear a birding trail you think a, a path um, that you're going to walk on that and actually it's more of a, um, a driving um, uh, Kind of way of getting from one place to the other. It's basically where we're, they're they're promoting or advertising certain hot spots or important areas where people are already bird watching, um, and um, promoting those sites as these are great places to go to bird, and um, so the trails. A lot of them have. Uh, which are the St. Clair Macomb Birding Trail will. They'll have little brochures like this one from Saginaw. And uh, so someone could put that in their car and uh, grab one of those and it describes the location. Uh, and then you might drive from one to the next um, and um, make it a point of trying to hit all the spots. It's kind of a fun little challenge. A little, uh, once you're there, you can explore, you can, um, uh, look on eBirds, see where people are, what kind of birds have been seen in that area, what to look for different times of year, like Elizabeth mentioned. Um, and uh, the birding trail, or the more organized part of it, is trying to get people to those sites, kind of advertise that. And uh, in the little brochure, they even talk about, you know, where, where can you park? How do you get there? The directions to it. Some of them are a little obscure or a little harder to find sometimes. Um, uh, is there a restroom? Uh, and some of them even mention, um, but we always uh, always suggest, and when you're birding, you always do, where's, where's another good restaurant around town where you can go to? So it's helping to get people to, to take advantage of these sites to really learn about birds. Um, but it also helps the local community, the local economy, where people are traveling to these areas. And um, uh, then once they're there, they might explore uh, in town or get, like say, go to the restaurant. Um, so it's also promoting um, getting people outdoors, the greenways, uh, uh, getting people out in the natural areas, getting people near the water, the, the blue, blue economy of the blue water areas. Um, Many of them, and Barb has a big stack there, uh, tend to have um, not just a, a, a hard copy brochure like this, but also a website. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there is uh, a place on um, where there's a QR code, uh, you can go to the website. They will be, um, the St. Clair Macomb one will also have signs at these spots. So maybe I don't know anything about it. This is our uh, finally decided upon logo for St. Clair Macomb Birding Trail. We tried to do some things that were similar to other birding trails where there's bird. <laughs> uh, and many of them we tried to, it's Great Lakes oriented so and water oriented so uh, like a turn or a gold type of bird and then binoculars in there so it kind of indicates 
um, what, uh, uh, what it is, there'll be signs and you can like, again, hit the QR code uh, or before you go, you can uh, go to the website and there will be a whole interactive website that will uh, have all that information, what birds can be seen, description of the area. Um, so it's kind of tying in, as, uh, as uh, Tom was mentioning, to uh, what other places around our state, around the, co the coast of the farm, uh, and, uh, but also all around the country, uh, and to help get people to um, be familiar with where these spots are. So the trail isn't a, as much of a hiking trail. Once you're there, you can hike the trail. <laughs> But it's like to hit different spots. It's kind of fun to, like I say, do have a road rally kind of, you know, go one one. Let's go see what the next one's like. So uh, uh, you can go explore into new areas by using the tool, and it helps people find these areas. Barb, it sounds like the birding trail is something that birders are familiar with. They know to look for a birding trail. How important is this going to be for new birders? Well, new birders and old birders, because uh, <laughs> I guess I feel kind of an older birder. Before birding trails, we had all these books that we purchased from different places. I've got, you know, Florida and Colorado and Arizona and Texas, and we would use these guides, you know, lane guides, to help us find where to go birding. Mm -hmm. And they would give the information, but it's kind of bulky to be carrying around. Mm -hmm. So then other places started doing these birding trails. And these are things, you know, you gather these and you save them. So I've got them right. here from Alabama and Florida and uh, Texas, Arizona. And these, again, are maps, and they will tell you where to go, very similar to the ones that we've had in other parts of Michigan. We've got the Sunrise Coast and the Saginaw Bay. And this... Um, uh, Sunrise Coast, they had them in the motel where I stayed when I went to Taos. Mm -hmm. They had them right there in the yes. bin for anybody to help themselves. So it's a good way to publicize what's available in the area. Mm -hmm. In our area, the St. Clair Macomb, we've been lacking in having a trail. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very, very pleased that we finally are going to be having one because they say birders come from all over, especially one of the big draws to Michigan is the Kirtland's Warbler, yes. which will soon be featured on our license plates. Mm -hmm. yes. which I've already ordered. Oh. But in <laughs> any case, people come to Michigan from all over the world to see the Kirtland's Warbler. Yes. And while they're here, they have other options now. They, don't, they check out the websites, they check out eBird, and um, it'll help the people find Can the birds. find more information about the uh, future of this trail? Well, once everything is, is more organized and, and complete, you know, when the brochures are ready and everything else, I'm sure it'll be some um, mm -hmm. uh, sharing in, in social media is what I can do because I'm uh, the administrator of Macomb Audubon's Facebook page, and I know Blue Water Audubon has a page, and a lot of times the things we post, they're shared by other community pages, like Make Macomb Your Own and Macomb County and St. Clair, and, and so it'll get out that way, but then there, I'm sure there'll probably be some newspaper articles that, you know, will be publicizing it also. So the, the word will get out. And word of mouth is very important, too. Remind people again, where can they attend the Winter Bird Blast? Oh, okay. Winter Bird Blast will be held this year at the St. Clair County Administration Building Auditorium. It's located at 200 Grand River Avenue in downtown Port Huron. That's very close, about a block from the St. Clair River. It starts at 9 a.m. and it runs until about noon. Uh, with about the first hour or maybe a little over an hour being the indoor uh, educational event. Uh, the doors will open at 8.30 a.m., so I encourage people to come early and get settled in. No reservations are needed. I mentioned before that it's totally free to the public. Uh, anyone can join. Uh, St. Clair County Metropolitan Planning people will be there, and they've been kind enough to uh, provide refreshments for the event. Everything totally free. We'll have some raffles and uh, just come. Barb, Liz, and Julie, thank you all for driving up here today <laughs> and uh, joining us for this panel. And uh, this is something that is always near to Tom's and my heart that mm -hmm. we promote birding for, for St. Clair County. And uh, thank you for coming up here to help us with that. And this program was presented by Blue Water Healthy Living sponsored by the Grant Smith Health Insurance Agency and produced by GBS Media. Thank you.